This is question answer session. In response to the questions and emails I am speaking, someone asked if I can say something about the concept of God. Is God a person of consciousness? I will speak not only in relation to one word, but the words that emanate from different religions where God plays an important role in different forms. If I ask you, do you know what is Kursi, what is Maze, what is Takia? You will wonder what kind of thing is this. The words that I am using come from Hindi language, Maze. In order to understand what is Maze or Kursi, you must have an image in your mind. The moment I show you image, you will say, yes, I know. This is table. Yes, table is called in Hindi maze. And I know this is kursi. People sit on that. But if I give you simply a hint that something that has four legs, a little place to sit down and a backrest, you will try to figure out what it refers to. Two things are important. First, you have to be familiar with the word that I am speaking and you must have an idea of the image in your mind. If someone carries you to the restaurant and calls out a name, Chicken a la food. Chicken a la food? What is this? I have never heard about this. When you, you are told the name, but you have not given the image. You have not tasted it. I am giving the two examples. You cannot taste a table, but you can experience it. You can experience a table. And takia is pillow. If you are shown the image, you will know immediately because you are familiar with English language. If you are a German, you will immediately say in German, Yes, it is that or Spanish or whatever language you are familiar with. For that very reason, we have for the children in the primary school books with the image on one side and on top we have the names written in, in the language to which these children belong. And then image of apple and on top it is written F you are identified that A stands for apple, but A cannot stand for anything. A stands for acid also, but there is a standard. A for apple, B for bat, C for cat, F for fan. So that is what we use the standard measures. In all the three religions, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. We use the word God. I am speaking on this word because someone has asked to explain and it is important for me to explain. Otherwise, it does not matter to me. What is important to me is you. I am not interested in whether God exists or not, whether he is alive or dead and wherever he is, let him rest in peace. For me, what is most important is you. You can transform. I can bring about a change in you, bring about a, a greater understanding. And when that understanding comes in you, you will be able to handle the basic things around your life in a better, in a more understanding way. Now, you look at it. How does this concept of God came into Hindus? The Hindu scriptures, the Vedas, that is, that comes from the root known as Vid. Vid means to know. All that is known. How does life begin? That is why I find Hinduism has more practicality as far as understanding is concerned. The, there are four basic Vedas. One is concerned with the art of medicine. The other is concerned with uh, the music and the various aspects of it and so on and so forth. 
and in each Veda while it is being composed there is a particular theme and that theme may be like I am talking to you of this one hour program in that there may be a 10 minutes dedicated to a particular topic a particular cone, a particular parable or riddle that can be separated and that is what is called as Upanishads. It is a beautiful word. It comes from the three words. Separate. Upa means sit. Ni means close. And shat is a verb that completes the sentence. Come and sit close to me. When you come and sit close to a person of awareness, master or a teacher, you learn. And that is what this theme came about. There are 108 big and small Upanishads. Vedas are divided into three parts. The first part deals with the scenic beauty, beauty of the mountains, plains, rivers, whatever it is, whatever person sees, it is described in a most poetic manner. Now, when you look at the love life of an individual, it begins in three parts. The first part is, in the beginning, everyone is poetic. You gather the poetic expressions from different poets or wherever you get and you start narrating it to your spouse. Your eyes are like dove, beautiful. Face is like moon. This is the poetic expression of the beauty and splendor that you see in the spouse. Then comes, you had enough description of the beauty. Now the second phase begins and in the second phase you want to go enter into a matrimony. Then certain rituals have to be performed, be it Hindu way, be it Christian way be it Islamic way. So then that is the ritualistic part. And then you have lived your life in a ritualistic way for some time. Then the continuation of the life has to be there. Rituals must and have to be understood in their essence. What is the essence of a particular ritual, be it a Hindu ritual or Christian or Islamic ritual? Unless you understand the essence of that ritual, it is meaningless and it cannot transform you. And this is what happens. Most of the people are holding their rituals. I have Hindu priests coming to me for an explanation of certain things, explanation of certain rituals and others as well. So in this here, you go into the deeper aspects of life you enter into philosophy, then you enter into meditation, the three aspects are, are completed. Now, how the different names of gods emanated in Hinduism, you need many things in your life. You need a job, so you are praying to God to give you a job. You are in fact invoking a particular quality of God. And that particular quality of God is known by a different name. There are obstructions. Then Hindus have a God named Ganesh or Gajana. And prosperity you need. You need wisdom. You need fine arts. So all these are the qualities that you would like to have in your life. The concept of many gods. How can there be so many names in Hinduism? You are a husband. You are a love, you are a son, you are a father, you are known, people call you by different names. Your wife, your spouse calls you by different name, isn't it? Sometimes she calls you by first name, sometimes she uses the first few initials. If she has been overflowing with love, she may say love, she may say honey. She may say darling, she may say any other names. We invent names. We invent names in order to call our spouse. 
Does this name create any confusion in your mind? Then children call you Dad, Da, Pa, Papi, and by different names. Friends call you by different names, Pal, Pali, this and that, and many other names. But does it mean these are all your names? No, you are identified by this name. When your wife wants to call you, wants to get something from you, she is sitting on the bed. She wants you to get something for her. She has a gesture. She calls you by different name and, and then tells, gives you an indication after that that you know what she means. This is how in Hinduism and Islam various names came up. In Islam there are 99 names of Allah. If you still consider Allah sitting somewhere in the sky or God sitting somewhere, then you still are childish. Just as a child plays with the teddy bear or with his comforter, you are using God as your teddy bear. The child feels hurt, takes hold of her teddy bear. Wherever she walks, she carries her teddy bear. Teddy bear may be ugly, old, dirty, but her feelings, her aspirations are put into it. Mother says something to her, she beats her, child sobs, hugs her teddy bear, talks to the teddy bear, carries her wherever she goes. Do not make God your teddy bear. But we have done that. We have to outgrow that. You have outgrown. We have, science has created the concept of superheroes. Batman, Superman, and all these. Every child loves these, respects these, worships these. But what is the essence? 99 names of Allah, one of them is Majid. One of them is this. All these refer to certain qualities at the moment when you need something. A certain feeling comes to you. That feeling refers to you. It is the word God, the word Allah. These refer to totality. In Hinduism, the other day there is a concept where there is an elephant had God, along with that on either side two goddesses are there, one is Lakshmi, the goddess of prosperity, the other is Saraswati, goddess of fine arts, wisdom. Someone asked what this refers to. The word Gajanan or Ganesh starts with G, G in Hindi. When we go to the root of it, etymologically, G refers to light. Light is what? Is not that the light that you turn on in the switch and then you say light has come. No, light means understanding. Light means awareness. Light's, light means consciousness. You have grown. You are thinking like a mature person. Not that you are physically mature, but mentally you are still a child. You remember the famous incident in Christianity with Galileo. He said, it is, the Bible says, it is the sun that revolves around earth. Galileo said, if I am mistaken, just recollect the name. It is the earth that moves around the sun. He was summoned by Pope. He said, you have to change that statement because whole Christianity base is based on this concept that it is the sun that revolves around the earth. If it proves otherwise, the structure of Christianity will fall apart. Galileo was forced to change it, but he made a statement. He said, whether I am forced to change it or not, it does not affect on the movement of the earth and sun. 
they do not understand the religion and for the sake of saving Christianity neither the sun nor the earth will change their movement earth will continue to revolve around the sun and these kind of things were made science has proved otherwise so ga refers to light awareness understanding and when you can see things beyond all that is known that means the light has come to you awareness has come to you you can see things beyond the dimension of known two of my titles sex dimensions beyond the known and marriage dimension beyond the known refers to that we have known certain things about sex about marriage but what is beyond sex you could not understand that could not imagine if there is anything beyond sex or beyond marriage then it is said light has dawned on that person when the light comes you are a totally different person when the light comes when understanding comes you are understanding the finer aspects of the fine arts the wisdom wisdom is not confined is not that which is confined to the known it belongs to that realm which is unknown now you know the basic art of cooking there are recipes when you start going into the research aspect of it you are experimenting with your spices with different combinations this is where you are using your acumen a deep understanding of the field that you are in and creating dishes inventing the dishes which do not exist on the menu card of any one this is wisdom you are using your intelligence when the light comes in you encompass inherent qualities of which goddess saraswati is considered to be the embodiment and when that happens prosperity comes to you via another hindu god goddess lakshmi the goddess of money the goddess of prosperity if you are that wise if light has come to you what had happened to michael dell what had happened to steve joe you look into the life of michael dell as a young person he went to the bank he wanted to borrow some money but the bank refused to lend him the money saying that the project that he is talking about the bank could not understand and did not finance him he immediately decided that he is not going to depend on any bank and now he owns an empire is steve job he was working with apple he bought and somehow collected he did not have the money in his initial part of his life he used to walk miles to go to hare krishna the hindu concept of social service where they get free meals and he used to get the meals then somehow the other he gathered some money bought an old laptop dismantled it what happened in that dismantling light came awareness came a thought process came that if i do this if i do this and he started experimenting he started to learn the fine art the system of fine art in the aspect of computer and he devised a system he came prosperity came to him by way of his wisdom by way of his intelligence by way of his keen understanding of fine art he became one of the richest men so these three things first light has to come to you ganesh then you start excelling into the fine arts if it is music any kind of fine art music learning be it 
whatever field you feel from within you begin to excel and then by way of that prosperity happiness comes to you this is the essence of this the image that is placed on the hindu temples hindus are asked to worship you can worship it without understanding like a child holding on to his teddy bear or you understand its essence and then you don't need to worship or follow the ritual of worshiping the hindu god or christian god or islamic god in various forms then you ask me if lovey dovey or love is a better name if love when your wife calls you lovey dovey or she calls you love and when she is angry you know what she calls you let me not tell so which is better lovey dovey is better love is better or honey is better it depends on a particular situation a particular moment of expression but is are you confined to lovey dovey or confined to honey or confined to sweetheart you are much more than that these are some of the expressions of quality that you manifested one time you will not be lovey dovey or honey when you are sitting on your desk performing your job as an employer and you are dealing with your employees then you are not lovey dovey you are a strict disciplinarian a man of intelligence and integrity where you are capable of solving the problems these are the various qualities that's why in deeper aspect of islam we gave 99 names of allah why not 100 99 means the process is continuing but it has not come to an end if i say one figure one one is static that means beyond the one there is nothing but if we know technically 99 why not they did 100 this is metaphorical metaphorical in the sense that his qualities are infinite as many people are there they envision him they experience him in that way the names that lovers and beloveds call their spouse is infinite you have a limited experience of yours if all the people who are there in this meditation have been asked to write the names that they call their spouse or their spouse call them out of love their the number will increase infinite because the moments are different and each moment the expression becomes different this is how the concept of god came in but then you have to realize this is the quality the attribute of hindu god vishnu sahasranam thousand names of vishnu 108 names of in the elephant headed god ganesh 108 names of lakshmi 108 names of saraswati and hindus now technically go on worshiping go on remembering or reciting the 108 names but you have to understand the essence of each name and then in islam 99 names of allah when we ask the name of our children we call them as if it refers to a particular quality of god majid hanif these are all the qualities of allah and we take one quality of allah as the name of our children go beyond the stage of teddy bear attain the maturity that you have gone beyond that and oh, this is what spirituality is moving from the physical realm it is like a ladder that you are trying to climb to reach to the open sky on the from the ground level you can see a limited view of what is happening if something is happening on the street and you are at this street level you will not be able to have a 
clear view of what is happening because there is crowd around you. If you go, if you step, the staircase is a spiral. You take complete a circle. You reach to the same spot, but your height is different. This is what meditation is. Whether you go deeper into your depth or you go higher, a spiral staircase. You can make a mark on the ground level. When you complete one spiral, you are one level higher than the ground level. You will see a different image of whatever is happening on the street. You take complete a second circle, you reach the third level. If ground level is called the first level, then you, as the level keeps on changing, then what actually happens? You see a different view of all that is happening. This is what is spirituality. We have to transcend the physical plane, which is full of barriers. Then we have to transcend the emotional barrier. The emotions completely impede our way. It is for the heart, the emotions to suggest our problems and it is intelligence to solve them. This particular sentence emerged out of me in 1976. I was working on my first publication, two books, Mathematical Economics and Econometrics. At the end of each chapter, a certain problems were given and I was supposed to give the answer to that problems. But I was getting the problem in, first I have to solve those problems and then give the results and maybe give the hint how to add, tackle that particular problem. That time the money was scarce. I used to save the money to travel because it was almost 25 miles from my home to reach to that place. In the morning the institute bus used to pass by my place and traveling with that bus, it was free. And I used to save the money to buy the books and the material that was necessary. There was a state of, in your technical term, depression. So I said, let me go and eat something. When we are depressed, we either abstain or we eat too much. So I went to the cafeteria, institute cafeteria, ordered things more than what I would normally do. Normally I may take just a small bite and a cup of tea. And as I was doing it, all of a sudden, waiting on the table, in the cafeteria, amidst the crowd of the students and professors, all of a sudden, now I am beyond that physical plane. I am not being depressed with that problem, not finding the solution beyond that, overcome that state. The fine arts beginning to show their light unto me. It is for the heart to suggest our problem and it is for the intelligence to solve them. Hey, what's this? Eureka, I have found it. It is for the heart to suggest our problems and it is for intelligence to solve. It was never written. It was never forgotten, never remembered never try to remember and later on I change it from intel intellect first the word that came at that time it was intellect then I change it to intelligence and now to awareness and I came back to the library it opens in the morning seven and closes midnight from seven in the morning until midnight I remain there glued on the desk in the library trying to solve the problem. That time we did not have the calculators and all those facilities, computers and so. Manually we had to do. Midnight, it was a tradition, the bell will ring in the library indicating the time has come to close. Then the person will visit every floor and tell you to leave. So I left my all the books on that 
and put a sign, do not disturb, and I walked down to the faculty department based uh, room. Remain there. I haven't eaten anything. Next day, in the evening, for dinner we reached to our friends and I found all the solutions to those scores of the problems that were given at the end of each chapter. There is no God came to help me because I went in a scientific manner. It is for the heart to suggest a problem. We need to transcend the physical plane. And Al-Ghazali spoke of seven values. There is nothing wrong in any religion, be it Hinduism, be it Christianity, be it Islam. Because Islam is the awareness of Holy Prophet, Hazrat Al-Pagumbar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Christianity is the awareness of Jesus. Hinduism is the awareness of different aspects of God. How can it be wrong? What is wrong, you are not able to understand it. If this particular person cannot be your spouse, that does not mean there is something wrong in it. The wrong is that you have not come across a person who has been able to give you the essence of Islam, the essence of Christianity, the way of Jesus give you the essence of Hindu way, give you the essence of Buddha's way. Now Buddha, when he did all that he could do, nothing happened. He followed all the rituals. He abandoned the way of rituals. He came on the bank of the river Niranjana. He was trying to cross over the river. A woman named Sujata came and she offered him sweet rice. He ate that and he said that out of my good fortune that I have seen the image of God in you. And she brought that. Buddha ate that. And he sat down under the tree in a lotus posture. Now all the Buddhists, they eat sweet rice and sit down in the lotus posture as if Sweet rice and lotus posture is the way to attain to enlightenment. This is a ritual. Hindus follow the ritual blindly. They do not understand the essence of it. Why do we have to bend down in a particular sasda? In a, when you go, you have to. When you go to a particular shrine, just as you meet someone, when you meet someone, you have to greet the person. How do you greet? Do you know how we greet when we are walking through the corridors of the office? Mechanically, good morning, 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 morning. Whether the person's attention is towards you or not, the person is busy doing something and we have the hymns singing morning, 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 morning. Meaningless, nobody, I do not pay any attention to anyone, I am doing something and you, can, you are disturbing me in your so-called rituals. I'll give you a beautiful example that is with a master. My nana, every morning when he will take a bath, after the bath, he will sit down on the chair, he will have his cap put on, then he will do his prayers. That time he will pay salutations to all the masters. Hazrat, starting from Hazrat Apayomba Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Razila Talaunu, Salman Farsi Razila Talaunu, all the masters in the chain, golden chain of the super Naqshbandi Tariqat. A man came and he stood up in the corner. He stood up in the corner. Others came. He is busy in something. They touch his feet, bow down to him and gone. Finish your salutation. This man remained standing in the corner. When he finished his prayers, then he said, You. And that because Master's attention was towards him, he bowed down to him and pays his respect. Only his respect was received because, and that time the kind of energy flowed from the Master to that seeker. He came for the first time, he was prepared. He was ready to be a disciple. 
Then he said, I came so and so. Then he was told. The master said, I know you. Then he remembered the words of his another master. He had been going to a fellow disciple of Swami Vivekananda, the great Hindu monk, who is still the United States and the Western world with his famous 1893 Parliament of Religions speech. His fellow, he was going there and he wanted him to accept him as his disciple. He said, the master said, your share is not with me. He said, then what do I have to do? How will I find the master? He said, you do not have to find your master. Your master will recognize you. And then he remembered when the Sheikh Brijmohan Lal said, I know you, immediately knew that this is going to be my master. This is my master. When this particular saint has said that your master will recognize you. So when we are going to the shrines of these, on, in ziyarat to the shrines, we have to pay respect. Is there any particular way of paying the respect? We follow the ritualistic way of paying the respect. A glance is more than enough to pay the respect. Lovers and beloved, they look at one another and in that they greet one another. There is no verbal exchange of the words. A mere glance, the communication, the communion happens through the eyes, heart to heart communion. This is the way to pay the salutation. When a Muslim person goes to a shrine, he continues to say, use the Islamic words out of Quran, uses Duru Sharif, Duru Taj, this and that and so peace. A Hindu one goes, he starts in a Hindu way and continues to say long prayers. Whenever I go to a Hindu function, it is said when you are offering final prayers, you have to stand up. But the high priest who is reciting and the musicians, they remain sitting. They ask me, why you don't stand? I said, standing is not in a part of prayer. Prayer is to be accepted and heard by heart. It has nothing to do with standing. It is once you are full of reverence, then you can remain sitting or standing. It matters not. And all those people who are standing, we know what is going on deep within them. But how long this fellow will continue to do the prayer? I am tired. I want to sit down. There is a particular incident comes in the life of Nanak. It is said that Nanak is both Hindu and Muslim, neither Hindu nor Muslim. So it was Friday, the day of prayer. The chief said, you said there is no problem between the Hinduism and Islam. So today is Juma. I am going to offer my prayers. Can you come to the mosque and say prayers? Nanak said, yes, there's no problem. Then he said, there is only one condition. I will offer prayer only if you are offering the prayer. He said, what kind of condition is this? I am going to offer my prayers in the mosque this Friday. And it is customary that every Friday, whether you offer your namaz on any other day or not, you must go on Friday, offer your prayers and take part in kutwa. He is just stood in front. Nanak stood behind him. But all through the prayer, Nanak remained standing. He did not bow down even in one shasta. The man was angry and he could not complete his prayer. Somehow he completed the prayer and then he turned towards Nanak in the mosque and he said that you cheated. You said you will offer the prayers but you did not. Nanak said, I told you that I will offer my prayers only if you offer. The man got startled. He said, didn't you see I offered my prayers? He said, yes, you offered the prayers as a ritual. You cannot fool me. What was going on within you was not prayer. The man, his most expensive and beautiful horse has died and he was thinking all along the prayers, how can I go to Kabul? During that time, Kabul was a place where 
the beautiful if somebody wanted a horse he has to go to kabul the capital of afghanistan and get the horse from there something else is going on with him and you say it is a prayer you are not in commune with and the person who is leading in your prayer what he is thinking of he is thinking that the crop is ready there is a shortage of labor allah how can i get the labor as if allah is the contractor to get the labor for you to do your work both of them admitted to nana that during their prayer during all the shastras they were thinking what nana had to nana has the capacity to dis- to see within what was going on this is a famous incident in the life of nana this is the way of the master when we go at the shrine it is not now what happens that the master or the sheikh is continuing his usual way reciting from quran e pak quran e majid duru sharif duru taj and you are standing like a dumb statue not knowing what to do keep on fidgeting you do your respect your way and forget about the other your etiquette is to the shine where you are. and that time what is very important you are in harmony with that shine with that shape to whose shine you are you have to recollect his attributes recollect this is why it is said naqshbandi tarika there is a particular set of couplets that is known as shajra set that is a composition that has the attribute of that particular shape and it says grant me that light in the name of this particular shape who has attained to that state ya ilahi apni azmat aur ata ke waste noor e imad e mohammad mustafa ke waste ya ilahi apni azmat ya ilahi refers apni azmat your great ya ilahi apni azmat aur ata ke waste for the sake of thy greatness grant me this noor e imad e mohammad mustafa ke waste in the profiles of holy prophet hazrat abbas paigambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam grant me thy noor light and that iman that trust that this light comes from the beyond thy self then it is for the second shaykh hazrat abu bakr siddiq razi allah taala it has been told to us that when we are going to the particular shaykh we must remember the name of the particular couplet of that shaykh if you do not remember the durood taj durood sharif or any other way of salutations continue to remember that and through that you are connected to the consciousness the energy field god is that infinite energy field one can envision one can experience it in immediate way either in the form of azma in the form of majid in the form of anything else out of these 99 names you can invent your own name ishan just as this name emanated and this is what osho has done when he gave a particular sanyas name to his seekers it is the inherent quality it is the attribute that you have to develop in you when you look at it what is natural to you one of the participant in the meditation he has been given the name dhyan yatri dhyan means meditation yatri means traveler one who is a traveler in meditation you have to remember you are a traveler in meditation and consciousness continue to move the other is given the name prem sutra prem means love sutra means principle you are the principle of love and that person has developed in her the various aspect of love in the form of care concern and many things and that is the way the person has to evolve 
so based on the inner quality which comes naturally to you a particular name is given to you and that name is the essence someone is given the name saraha saraha is one of the the masters tantric masters where we play with the energy field and try to transcend tilopa's mahamudra tilopa is another master and these names he has given to the people when a particular person comes in your company and you are this is what bayat is according to islamic tradition person comes and sits in your company the shape connects your inner being he looks into your inner being what is the route that he has to follow master acts at that time as the gps system when you punch your destination the gps system calculates the shortest route and gives you the direction but is that system during which the master connects to your root your root is to attain to that totality that harmony with the environment with all that is and he uses the shortest he decides the shortest route in the form of a by a name given that is your potentiality consciously you have to work on that particular name that is given to you what love is is it making love to a person in the bed no it is an energy field energy field to connect to someone else whom you do not know how to connect to that person love is the greatest way to connect to that person you can create you can speak a beautiful word you can show a beautiful gesture you can create a beautiful dish out of love that is why my slogan is cooking lovingly cooking meditatively cooking for buddhas you are not cooking for everyone has the potentiality to evolve and grow into a state of dimension beyond the noon this is what i have been requested to speak on the concept of god i have spoken i have given you insight now you decide if allah is better god is better or ram or krishna is better to me what is best is you i am interested in you and no one else i can bring about light into you i can bring about an understanding i can share my insights into you so your horizon your thinking level goes beyond the level of knowing you can start thinking in the same way start acting in the same way. i am transferring my being my presence to you the way it had happened to me i shared it with you neither allah is important nor god nor ram nor krishna you are important you and me a love affair between you and me and no one else is there that time the moment you understand this you will never ask the question whether god is important allah is greater or god or islam is meaningless islam is meaningless because you have not understood the essence of it christianity is meaningless because you have not understood the essence of jesus you have not understood the essence of holy prophet hazrat abraham sallallahu alaihi wasallam forget about his physical aspects forget about the other things it is not important to me whether what was the relationship between jesus and mary magdalene what is important to me how he transferred mary magdalene just one word woman go home and sin no that was enough to bring about a transformation in mary magdalene it was enough to bring about a transformation in the person jesus walks around the river and he sees a man catching the fish 
and he tells me, come and follow me. A man, he says, Master, my father has died. Let me go and cremate them and come back to you. The famous statement, let the dead bury the dead, you follow me. This statement, you have to understand the essence. The moment you understand the essence of it, you will love Jesus. You will love Hasratna Paigambar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you try to bring that quality into you, your life will be transformed. And the way of the Masters is to bring about a transformation in you.